my question for you is, does it make sense to everyone looking on the screen here, knowing what we just went through? Get routines don't require validation because you're just receiving information. It's just the set routines. All right. So we're going to change these four lines. Set first name, set last name, set hours worked, and set hourly rate. We're going to change those four lines. I'll give you the code right now. All right. So starting with the first name. I'll put in the code and then we'll go over it. So. So if you look up on the screen, I've changed both the first name and the last name. All right, so I changed line 95 and line 103. In English, this says, as long as I've got something in the first name field, whatever it is, accept that for the first name. Otherwise, set the first name to unknown FN. We do the exact same thing then for the last name. Do those two lines of code make sense to everyone? It's using the question mark colon operator, which you've used for at least a few semesters now. <clears throat> So make sure you change line 95, and that's first name, and make sure you change line 103, whatever yours is. If yours is the same as mine, your, your line numbers may be different, but make that last name. Again, if you didn't hear this yesterday, just to, so everybody's aware of it, <coughs> the plan right now is when you come in tomorrow, I will give you a pretest. Work on it as long as you want to, but you know until around three, and then I'm going to go over it. If you say I don't want to do that now, I want to finish up the homework, then finish up the homework. All right? Does everybody have those two lines? All right, then let's fix the other ones, the hours worked and the hourly rate.
<clears throat> so again, I changed lines 111 and about 120. They're over two lines now. All right. So make sure you've got this here in line 111 and 112 on mine and in line 120 and 121 on mine. I'll leave them up there for a second. We're almost done with the first part of this. Then we'll write the driver. Then we'll copy it and make changes to it so we can get it to work for, uh, for arrays. Everybody caught up? All right. There's one more method that we have to write, and that one more method that we have to write is the two-string method. I want you to understand something. Hopefully you can, and that's this. We, we looked at stuff like this where you wrote on the screen something like system.out.println, hello, something like that. Everybody with me? You've all done stuff like this, all right? What this ends up doing is it ends up calling the two-string method in order to do its job. We can overwrite the two-string method so it does what we want it to do. That's what we're going to do right now. All right? Again, I've got a couple comments in here. Not a lot, but a few comments in here. So. I'm going to do right here just so you know this is I got this thing called output str which stands for output string and I'm just going to keep building it up by putting everything in there so I'm going to put in the first name then the last name then the hours worked then the hourly rate then the gross pay all right then the uh, and that'll be it and then we have to write one more method with like four lines in it to print out the final, our final total gross. All right. So.
that went. One thing we should have done here, well, you know, nobody said it, but we really should have added our patterns here. That'll put hours worked with two decimal places. That'll put the hourly rate two decimal places with a dollar sign as will this. It's obvious something is still screwed up in here, so I'm going to see if I can find it. Jeez. Hey guys, if you see me make errors, please tell me. This is all one line. Or I have to end it. You can do it either way. got that big string built, we have to return it. Does it make sense to everybody in here if you look on the screen? We could have I could have just as easily done this.
So when we tell it to print this out, what it should do is come here and grab the first name with a blank, then a, uh, you know, a new line, then the last name and a new line, then the hours worked and a new line, then the hourly rate and a new line, then gross pay. Does all that make sense? I have a question for you. How many total gross pays are there? Four. So what word do you think we might need at the beginning here? Close. Static. God, that should be everything. Just about 200 lines. Now, even if you're still typing, please stop for a second and look up on the screen. Don't look at me, but look at the screen. Do you notice this? The compiler has flagged all sorts of stuff where I might have made something private that says it didn't have to be private or whatever. These, since it's yellow, these are all warnings. And it tells me there are 17 warnings found and 8 typos found. For those typos, <clears throat> if I call something like OUT output STR, it's got its own dictionary. Since that word's not in there, it flags it as being a typo. Does that make sense? All right. You can look through these, and if you think that, you know, for instance, look here. It says... Class payroll is never used. It isn't used because we haven't written the driver yet. We're going to write the driver in just a minute. All right? So some of these very well could go away in just a couple minutes. Does anybody need me to move up or down on the screen at all? Everybody's got all the code, correct? All right, then click your double disk icon. In fact, you don't have one. So do a file, save all, or a control S, whatever you want. And now we're going to come in and we're going to write the driver for this. The good news is the driver is about a third as long as what we typed so far. Okay? So, if you would please, come over to your source again. Come over to here, right where we've got, all right, right now underneath this we have what? We've got our payroll, right? Right mouse click on the name of your package, choose new, 
choose Java class, and we're going to call this payroll driver. It's not mandatory that you use the word driver, all right, but it's kind of a standard that you use the same name as the name of the class and you append onto the end of it the word driver, all right, which is why I did that. All right, make this bigger. There we go. <clears throat> When we print this stuff out, do you remember the first assignment you, that you did? Remember when I had you do those message dialogues and that stuff? Remember that? Well, in order to use that, we've got to import right here javax.swing.star. So please put this line of code in right here. All right? And now what we're going to add in here is a main. You should now be wise enough, for lack of better words, that you should be able to look at that and figure out that that's going to call the third constructor because we're passing four variables into it. Does that make sense? Okay. What should print out when we get done with this, what should print out is first name Jeff, last name Scott, Hours work 40, hourly rate 25, gross pay 1,000. Does all that make sense to everybody? That's what should end up printing out when we get done with this. All right? We're going to make a total of what? 1, 2, 3, 4, I think 5 of these, something like that, 5 to 10 of these. I don't know. <clears throat> Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to test this. So let's literally display all Jeff payroll object info. All right, so J option pane dot show message dialog. Don't want that there. I didn't write parent component there. There's some auto auto fill stuff in here. Everybody hear me? I did not write this in here. I did not write that. I did not write first name right there. I did not write last name. That's stuff the compiler provides. Did you hear what I said? All right, because this is very confusing. You might think, I got to type that in. Don't type in this word. Don't type in this word, etc. All right, just type in Jeff comma Scott comma 40 comma 25 all right just do it like that
Now, I'm going to, you, you don't need to do this yet, but I'm going to do a file, save all, and I'm going to see if this runs. I could get an error. I don't know. See this? Jeff, Scott, 40 hours worked, already rate 25, gross pay 1,000. Everybody see that? I can already see an error I made in my code. What's the error? I don't see any dollar signs, do you? So I've got to go back. You may have to do the same. I've got to go back to my payroll.java and where I declared that those two decimal formatters, one of them should have had a dollar sign in it. Stupidly, what I did was I did a copy and paste. So this second one should have a dollar sign. Make sure you go back and do that. Apologize. Now if I go back to the driver and run it again, I should have my dollar signs in there now. And notice I do. See that? Now if you get errors and you can't figure them out, and raise your hand when we get all done and I'll be more than happy to try it at least to help you with them. All right. So there's our first employee object. It's a good start. I'm going to copy all this employee object information that I have and I'm going to create another one. If you don't want to type it in or copy it, you don't have to. You can just go ahead and retype if you want. Whatever turns you on. This is the second one will be somebody else. And again, like I think I mentioned, I use my family. Again, let me first run this and make sure that it works. There's the Jeff. There's the Sandy. All right. Jeff. I don't want Jeff dot to string everywhere it says Jeff. I want to change it to Sandy. That's Jeff. But down here, that's Sandy, Sandy, Sandy. That should be Sandy dot to string. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to walk over to the office and I'm going to grab the copies I have for you. It might be easier for you, for this part of it at least, to work off those copies. And if it's easier for you to work off hard copies, here's one for each of you.
you look up on the screen here, I just did the third object. I purposely gave an out of range hours figure, 150. See how it changed it to zero? Now that might not be what you want. You might, we may want to go back and say, you know what? If you don't know how many hours they work, they work 40. If you don't know how much money they make, they make 10 bucks an hour. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Because right now, Taylor's working, uh, no matter how many hours she works, she's making nothing. <coughs> Probably not what she wants. So we could have defaulted it to something other than zeros. We could have done that. All right. And look, if you look on the screen, how easy is that fix? That fix says that we go back to our payroll file and where we've got the um, our constructor that's in here where we have nothing. See this? We could say if it's nothing, you set the hours to 40 and you set the rate to 10. That's all we have to do to change that. Notice that if I change it like that and then go back to here, let's see what happens now with Taylor. All right. Still didn't like it. Something else has got to change as well. Oh, I know where it is. I know where it is. When I get done, I want to run over the entire, even if it takes 10 or 15 minutes, I want to run over the entire um, driver with you. All right. Mm -hmm.
discussion on you know, uh, just really about the same problem, yeah. but shouldn't be all of Probably. All right. Don't don't even worry about it for right now, okay? If you look up on the screen, please. All right. I haven't filled in everything, but this is what I want to show you. So this is what I want you to look at. Notice we're creating an object here. Everything's valid. Again, this should come back. Jeff, Scott, forty, twenty-five, one thousand. Does that make sense? Everything's valid. Second one should come back. Sandy. Scott, 50, 10, 550. Does that make sense? Now, the third one should come back because that's out of whack. Should say Taylor Scott, 0, 50, but 0 times 50 should give her 0 for a gross pay. Then for Kenzie Scott, the same kind of thing. It should say the hours there are valid, so 50, but the hourly rate is invalid, so that should say zero. All right? Those are the only ones that I put in. Now, Tony said that he found a mistake. If you look on the last page and you go up to about in here, there's it, it says Olive, and then it says Chloe underneath there. Those should all say Olive, the ones that say Chloe. All right? That's not really what's important. Okay? Again, I want your attention, if I can get it, please. Everything is fine with the with the uh, Jeff object. Everything is cool because everything passed in was valid. Does that make sense? Everything was valid with the Sandy object because everything that's in there was valid. Does that make sense? Now let's go to the first invalid one, which is Taylor. All right. Well, I want to fix this. So what do I want to do? I want to say Taylor dot set our whoops set hours worked and I want to give it a valid hours worked does that make sense and it must be between 80 I'm sorry 0 and 84 so let's say she had a big week she works 60 hours all right and after we do that I want to print it out again to make sure that it worked So again, please look on the screen if you would. Notice, there's number one, all valid. There's number two, all valid. There's number three, invalid. So we updated it. Now it's valid. All right, well, evidently I put up wrong hours in. Okay? But you see, we can call those updated things. All right? So we can change an object at any time by using a set routine. All right? And it was her hours work. That's what I should have done. Not, not, I should have done a set hours worked here, not a set hourly rate. Hours worked. Okay?
I didn't do the last one yet in the in my example, but my count is still looks like it's wrong, so something's wrong in here, so I gotta fix that. Hmm. <laughs>